Hello. So I thought I would actually be on time and talk about the books that I read in February. And February was a much, much better reading month than was um, January. January is just a hot mess. But this month was much, much better. So I thought I would just jump into the books and we can just chat about those. Some of them I'm not gonna talk about a ton because uh, I talk about them on the Reading Women podcast and I will link the episodes if they're available uh, down below. So the first two I'm gonna talk about are our two discussion picks for March. So for Women's History Month in March, we're talking about books by trans authors. And so we have Detransition Baby by Tori Peters, um, which is about a man named Ames, who has recently detransitioned de from uh, being a trans woman um, and it, the complications that he feels about his gender. Uh, when his girlfriend becomes pregnant, things get super complicated. So he reaches out to his ex, a trans woman named Reese, who uh, he asks if she wants to also be a parent for this child. So there are a lot of complicated feelings around uh, being a parent um, and what that's like. There's a lot of great discussions in here between the characters that really make you think. Uh, and one of the things I really love about this book is that this book really centers trans folks and their experiences. Um, and you know, as cisgendered people, we can be here and we can read this book and, and learn from it, but that's kind of like a side thing, right? The centering of trans people is so, um, you know, apparent in this book, which is which is fabulous. And so I really love that about this book. Um, yeah, so looking forward to discussing this with Jacqueline for um, March. Our other discussion book is uh, Jacqueline's discussion pick, and that is Ferris by Meredith Toulousen. Meredith Toulousen is a Filipina trans woman with albinism. And so she shares her experience going to Harvard, uh, people often thinking that she was white and what that experience was like for her, the idea of passing both in gender and in race and what that is like. It's a very complex story that she weaves together. And it's very interesting to see what she includes, what she omits, and just the story of how she found herself. Uh, now Meredith uh, identifies as a non-binary trans woman and uses the pronoun she, they, and I think that's important to know. But uh, I really enjoyed reading the story and, and, you know, learning more about Meredith's perspective on being a trans woman. So I think it pairs really well with the, a fiction book you know, having a memoir as well, and what, you know, what these stories tell um, about their experiences. So that was pretty great. Um, love those two books. And let's see, interviews. I'm trying to pull all the books I have for interviews. Okay, so um, books that I interviewed the author, so that's why I have them. Um, that is What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, what doesn't kill you? Uh, a life of chronic illness, lessons from a body in revolt. I do love Kelly Clarkson, who doesn't? Uh, by Tessa Miller. Okay, so this book, I am doing a live event with the author. Um, it will have already passed by the time this goes up, but I will link to it because I'm gonna save it on reading women's social media. Um, but this author has um, Crohn's, which is a uh, inflammatory bowel disease, not to be include, not to be confused, with IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. They're totally two separate things. My doctors thought I had an inflammatory uh, bowel disease for a very long time. And so I know a lot about, <laughs> about it. And so, you know, being someone who has a colon that's trying to like, you know, actively murder them, um, it was great to like read a story about a woman who's in a similar experience where her colon is and bowels are trying to like just give up the ghost and everything that she's had to do um, to stay alive essentially in a medical care system that is just a nightmare. Um, I really appreciate she acknowledges the privilege that she has being a cisgendered white woman of certain means living in New York City, so close proximity to great doctors, etc. She also is sort of like giving a how-to for new people to chronic illness to understand their rights when going into a doctor or et cetera, because um, you know, if, if you don't understand the medical system, you won't get great care because that's just how it's built. Like you have to know the ins and outs of it to be able to navigate and get the care you need, which is not the way that it should be. Um, so she gives a great um, advice in this book as well. 
Another interview I did was uh, with Jenny Offal. I read Weather and uh, I really loved how I felt immediate Virginia Woolf vibes and I asked her about Virginia Woolf just because I was like, this feels like Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf is mentioned in the book. Um, surely this was an inspiration. She's like, did you know that I recently wrote a new introduction to Mrs. Dalloway? And I was like, what? <laughs> so that was a surprise, but at least, you know, I still got it. I can still see the echoes of Virginia Woolf in people's writing, you know? Anyway, um, definitely go check that out. And then the other one that's also already up um, is Infinite Country by Patricia Ingle. I love Veins of the Ocean. Uh, Samuel read this to me because the audiobook wasn't out yet and he also enjoyed it. It's about uh, a family that has been divided, a Colombian American family. And so you have the mom and the two oldest children in America and you have the dad who's deported and their youngest child, Talia, um, who is um, born in the United States but sent back to Colombia to live with her dad and grandmother. So it's about this family that's been separated both physically and emotionally and like all of these different things and she just weaves these characters in so well together. It was absolutely fascinating and discussing the book with her was a great delight as well. So um, really enjoyed that. All right, so those are all the books for the podcast uh, and things that I read. You may have gathered that I read a lot in February for the podcast. I am behind on my reading. I have three books that I need to read for upcoming interviews in the next week. So that's kind of the speed that I I'm, I'm need to go at. And uh, oh my goodness, I'm reading so many books at the same time. Um, I kind of finish a bunch at once, which is what happened recently. So recently I finished Jack by Marilyn Robinson. Um, I don't really have complete thoughts on this, I'm going to be honest because I have so many thoughts. And I read this as a buddy read with Jen at Insert Literary Pen here. We both love Marilyn Robinson and uh, I'm, I'm just enjoying talking about it with her. It's a very slow buddy read, which I really enjoy. Um, but Jack is very interesting because it's third person, but it's really focused on Jack, who was a huge part of Home, which was like the second book in the series. It, it's a whole complicated thing, so I don't really have any, like, I mean, I enjoyed it. I guess that's the only thing I can really say at this point. If you want to discuss Jack, feel free to leave a comment, but I, I don't have anything, like, succinct to say yet. I'm still thinking about it. So, and I finished it like a week ago, so, I don't know. Another buddy read that I had um, was with Sean of Sean the Book Maniac. This is Runaway by Alice Munro. We have this uh, inadvertent tradition of reading a collection of Alice Munro's short stories together every year uh, somehow. And so I really enjoyed reading these. And whenever I see an Alice Munro in this series of, you know, books from vintage, I pick it up. And so I only have one left. What is this? What is happening? I don't know. I love Alice Munro. This isn't my favorite collection of hers. This deals with a lot of people running away from things, these random meetups of strangers that have a huge impact on their life, etc, etc. I would still say Too Much Happiness is probably my favorite still, but I mean, you read these stories and you see a master at work. She is so good at what she does, and I, I'm just like, how? How? And there's such a wide range of stories in this collection as well, like linked short stories to standalone to long, like almost a novella length story. It's yeah, dog character focused as well, which is great. Okay, so the next book I read is a booktube favorite, and that is The House of the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Um, this is basically like someone says, oh honey, you're stressed, gives you a cup of hot cocoa and sits you in, a, in front of a warm fire with a blanket and like a sleeping corgi at your feet, and it's delightful. Um, this is about a man who inspects orphanages of magical children and um, love happens, found family happens. It's just, you know, things are going to work out well because that's the story. But like you get caught up in it and it's delightful. I mean, I really enjoyed this book like everyone else. Um, so I feel like I have nothing else to add. Nothing, really. Um, a book I'm gonna talk about in my next um, Appalachian Lit um, series, but I don't know when that's going to be. Um, this is Same Sun Here by Silas House and Nila Vaswani. I listened to the audiobook for all of these except for Infinite Country, which Sam read to me. Um, but this one really, the audiobook stands out because Silas House 
um, and Neela Vaswani wrote this as an epistolary novel between two children. There is a girl named Mina who has recently moved from India to New York City, and Neela Vaswani wrote that section and reads it on the audiobook. And Silas House wrote the section on River, who is a young boy living in Kentucky, um, and his grandmother is an activist fighting mountaintop removal. And so they, he read that section. It's a fabulous experience. I love this book. I have no idea why I had never heard of this book before. I think it came out when I was in college, so I probably just missed it because of the timing, but it's so good and so delightful to listen to. And it's a very short read. Obviously it's middle grade, but I feel like there's a lot of things that are captured in this book that I don't think a lot of people realize. Uh, about what it's like to be Appalachian and what that, how that connects to other people's experiences and all the difficult things that these kids are going through and they find uh, deep connections and similarities even though they appear to have come from totally different parts of the world. As an Appalachian person, um, no longer living in Appalachia, I really connected with this book because um, they both their dads live in different places to send money back to them. So you have River's dad who works in Mississippi and you have Mina's dad who works in New Jersey um, and only comes home like one weekend a month, etc. So there's this section of the letter that I just, I, I loved. And so Mina is writing to River and she has this moment where she's talking about the story that her dad told her about a bride sitting with like these kitchen boys peeling potatoes and she says, <laughs> Um, I asked daddy why the girl had peeled potatoes and he said he thought the boys in the kitchen reminded her of her family in Mexico. So she wanted to be with them for a little while. It seems like there are so many homesick people in the world. It seems like so many of us live far away from where we were born. And I just thought about that and thought about the idea of homesickness and I'm reading this book because I'm homesick and want to go back home but can't because of the pandemic and all sorts of things and it just really hit home and in fact I fell asleep listening to this book and I dreamed of home and it was this whole experience where I woke up devastated because I was still you know in the south and, and not in home for me and, and I just there was just so many feelings connected to this book and I absolutely loved it would recommend. Um, there's a lot about Appalachia I don't think people realize, like its diverse ecosystem, the incredible number of activists, um, and people mostly see it as a red state. And so there's a section in here, you know, it's set in 2008, Obama's elected, and so Mina talks about seeing New York go blue, but Kentucky go red, and she says it seems like they think that River, you and I, River, should be on different sides and I thought about that a lot um, because that's what I'm seeing a lot. I actually get comments on my Appalachian Reads account that say um, you all are racist and you're getting what you deserve, as in like the bad things that are happening in Appalachia, opioid crisis, lack of internet and clean water and all those things, get what we deserve. Like that is terrible. Like if you think an entire region of 25 million people is like this, no. And I feel like this book reminds people of of the of, of the humanity of people and the deep connections people can have even though they appear to come uh, that's from such a different background that they would never get along but they do because they find connections and there's a universality in this book I really love um, so yeah would recommend obviously <laughs> like talked about it like five minutes so this is February I really enjoyed this month's reading way more than January's for sure um, but I still feel like I'm in a slump. I still struggle to read the books that I'm supposed to be reading. I find myself listening to uh, fluffy books like I'm halfway through um, Gideon the Ninth again. I'm reading it with a couple friends and I, I just really struggle getting into really deep hefty books because, but I want to read those. That's the thing. It's not like I don't want to actually read those and like I'm like you know some, Versively, like trying to sabotage my own reading. It's that I want to read these books, but I can't and I don't like that. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for bearing with me as I still figure out this camera. My tripod finally came in. So that's been nice to not have to film on a, you know, very light phone tripod that is very much useless. So uh, yeah, anyway, all right, until next time.
Talk to you later, friends.